Hello. In this video, I continue the Introduction to Coding Web Games using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript series with Part 3. In the previous video, we added a canvas element to our HTML file and drew a rectangle on it with JavaScript. In this video, we will learn to draw a circle on our canvas and to add a gradient to our colors. All the code written in this video is available in the link provided below. Let's get started. As you'll recall, we left our program in this state. A blue background with a 500 by 500 pixel yellow canvas uh, within it. And then upon that canvas, we were drawing a 100 by 100 pixel by 50 pixel rectangle that was positioned at x coordinate 10, y coordinate 10. Now we are going to draw a circle. Drawing a circle is not that much different than drawing a rectangle. In fact, it's so similar that I'm good. All I, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to copy paste all, everything that we wrote down to draw that rectangle, and I'm going to paste it right beneath what I already have. And then I'm just going to comment out the part where I draw the rectangle, paste the part here, paste it again. And then I'm only going to change one of these functions. And if you've guessed rect, then you're correct. The context.rect is no longer necessary, so I will <clears throat> I start to comment it out, but I'm actually just going to get rid of it because I don't need it. And I'm going to replace it with the correct function, which is context.arc, as in a portion of a circle. So it's context.arc parentheses, you know, in closed parentheses, semicolon, and then within the arc, within the parentheses, you're going to need to give it five parameters is actually what they are called. It takes an X coordinate for your circle, a Y coordinate for your circle. It needs to know the radius of your circle, as in how big you want just one side. You know, a radius is not the full diameter. A diameter is the radius times two. So this is only half of your circle's full width. So if you want a, a hundred a circle that is a hundred pixels from one side to the other, you would give it a 50 radius, which is actually what we're going to do not, pretty shortly. So it takes a x coordinate, a y coordinate, a radius, and then it needs to know what angle to start at, because it's a circle, it's an arc, and just trust me when you when I say you want to start it at zero, as in start at zero degrees, and then you want to go out all the way around to two times math, with a capital M, two times math dot PI, capital PI, capital I, and that asterisk you see is being, con is being counted as a multiplication symbol. So that is two times math dot PI for the fifth one. Now, the circle is measured, its x and y is measured in the center, unlike the rectangle where its x and y is measured at its top left corner, as I st stated last time, the circle is measured its uh, x and y in the center. So if we give this guy a radius of 100, remember I told you that is half of its width, it's going to have a width of 200 pixels, but I only gave it an x and a y of 10. So, its center is up here near the corner, and its radius is still uh, 100 out. So what you want to do is you actually want to bring a circle in at least twice, or at least the width of its diameter, or its radius, excuse me. So you want to bring it in at least 100, because that will put its center far enough away that the rest of the diameter, or the rest of the radius, of the circle will fit within your canvas like that and it's barely touching the sides as you can see because I brought it in just enough to be within now if you want to move the circle to the center I'm going to show you real quick how to put this in the center because it takes a little bit of math but it's not difficult to understand instead of just making this straight up X and Y what you're going to grab is the canvas width and height. For an x-coordinate, you want to use the width. 
So I've messed up here. What you want to do is first put little parentheses, and in those parentheses write canvas dot width divided by two because you want half of it. You don't want to go all the way to the edge of the canvas. You just want to go halfway. Now I've also mistakenly started to put minus 50 here, minus half the radius because I forgot momentarily that the x and the y coordinate were in the center. So you don't have to, for circles you don't have to minus the 50. But okay, now for the y coordinate we want to come halfway down to the top from the top. So that is the canvas dot height minus uh, divided by two. And then again, I'm going to put minus 50 here, but you'll see me erase it momentarily. That's for rectangles. For rectangles, you go half the width and half the height backwards to, to position in the middle. I'll address that in a later video. But for the circles, yeah, I realized it there. So now with that X coordinate and that Y coordinate, now my circle is in the center. So I'm, I gave it an X and a Y of exactly half of my canvas. That's why I put it there. So next we're moving on to adding the gradient. A gradient, if for anybody that doesn't know, is when one color fades into another color. But first, let's create some functions to draw our rectangles and our circles so that we don't have to just keep drawing it, writing everything in line. To do that, we write the word function and then we give it a name. I've written draw circle. You give it two parentheses, open and close, and then open and close curly braces. And then within those curly braces, I'm going to put everything that I wrote down for drawing a circle. Just copy paste. And then I like to format. I don't know how you can format on your computer. For my computer, it's just control A and then shift tab and then everything moves over nice and pretty. So you can see here, I'm not calling that function, so it's not drawing the circle. Once you make it a function, you have to then call that function if you want it to do anything. So now I have to actually write draw a circle and then open and close parentheses, and that means I'm calling that function. So now it will draw that circle again. And I'm gonna do the same here for the rectangle so that I can uncomment it, but it won't actually draw the rectangle once I uncomment it and I put it within the draw rect function that I'm creating right now. Function draw rect. Open and close parentheses, open and close curly braces, and then within the curly braces, put everything that you wrote for drawing the rectangle and then un uncomment it so that it actually becomes code that they can read. And then again, I'm going to format. So now I have two functions. One draws a circle, one draws a rectangle. I want if I want to draw both of them at the same time I just call both functions here I'm going to draw rect Oops. don't forget your semicolon and now when I refresh it's drawing both of them and it kind of looks like a floppy disk now if anybody remembers floppy disks or a camera I guess Okay, <clears throat> so that's awesome. That's one of the reasons I love functions. Now I can draw as many cameras, or <laughs> cameras, as many circles or as many rectangles as I want. Uh, there is a problem that they'll all be drawn in the same place because the functions only draw them in one spot, but we'll address that at a later, again, in a later video. I'll show you how to make those dynamic, as they call it. So now let's move on to the gradient. Somewhere between begin path and fill style we're going to write let gradient well actually you can just write grad let grad equal context dot create capital L linear capital G gradient open close parentheses semicolon now this is within our draw rectangle function. We're going to put this gradient on a rectangle because that's the easiest one to do first. A create linear gradient function that we've just called takes four numbers. It needs to know an x1 coordinate and a y1 co or one coordinate and that's where the gradient is going to start with one color 
and then it needs to know an ending x coordinate and an ending y coordinate and that's where the gradient is going to end and you'll see how that works in a moment so for the first one I'm just going to give it the rectangles x coordinate and y coordinate because it's going to start up in the left hand top left corner of my rectangle so I want it to start in the same coordinate as my rectangle does and then I want it to span across the entire rectangle so what that is is that means I actually need to say go to the rectangles x coordinate which is 10 and then add its width which is a hundred so I actually need to put a hundred plus ten here which you don't have to write that you can just write hundred and ten so that means my gradient is going to span from the x-coordinate of 10 out to the x-coordinate of 110 and uh, you can just give it the same y-coordinate because that'll make it a, a, a very even gradient on, if you keep the y-coordinate the same. Now to put the color in there you have to add a color stop so you do what I'm doing now you write grad dot add color stop capital C capital S and color stop and it takes a number where you want this color st stop to occur and it's going to be what they call a float which has the decimal point so for now we write 0.0, .0 and then a comma and then we give it a color I have chosen dark green momentarily you will see that that was a bad choice because you can't see the difference very well but now I add a second color stop this is where I want my second color to stop just like it sounds and I want it to stop at 1 so from 0 to 1 means a hundred percent 1 in this case means 100 percent now now that I have the color stops in my gradient over here on context.fill style I can replace the color with the gradient which I have named grad so now my fill style is this linear gradient that should span my entire rectangle going from dark green to green So when I refresh, you should notice a change from left to right. You should start at dark green, go to green, and change somewhere near the middle. And for the eagle-eyed, you'll notice it did actually work, but the difference is so slight against that yellow background, you can't really tell. So I decided to go back in and give it a different color that was very, very much different than the rest so you could see there you go now you see that it goes from red to green and that it transitions nicely around the middle because one starts at zero and the other ends at one or a hundred percent if you want to add a third color to this you just add another color stop and you make it you add you make it stop somewhere in between 0.0, .0 and 1.0 which I've chosen 0.5 because that is the exact center and I also chose another striking color so that you can see the difference so now I should have three color stops, one in the middle of the two I just had. There you go. I got purple in the middle. And you don't have to stop there. You can literally add as many color stops as you want. And just to prove that point, I added the entire rainbow here. So if you'll bear with me, I'm going to copy, paste, copy, paste, and then adjust everything. And this is also a good way to show how those decimal numbers work because 0, 0.0 means 0 and 1.0 means 100 percent so that's kind of for those of you you know initiated into math that's no problem but for those of you that don't know that means you have um, all the decimal points from 0 to 1 to work with so we need to end when we make our next color go up a little bit we just use a decimal point we don't go up we don't go up a full one two three four five six we go 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.4 and then 0 0.8 but then I realized that that's not that much of a a difference between some of the colors so I went and I adjusted it here I gave uh, orange I changed it to two four five and then I left six and eight so there you go red orange yellow green blue purple pink Roy G Biv pink now I refresh and you have the visible rainbow spectrum. <clears throat> That's how easy it is to add colors to your gradient. 
And when you mess around with the X and the Y coordinates, you mess around with uh, the angle of your gradient, and it's really cool. I suggest playing with this. So now we're going to add what's called a radial gradient for our circle. So it starts off much like a regular gradient. You say, first you have to, you know, get your brain right. And you say, let grad equal context dot create radial gradient. Now I write it out and then I thought I misspelled it. So I erased the whole thing and I wrote it again. But I'd actually spelled it right. So create radial gradient, capital R, capital G, open and close parentheses, semicolon. And this one, this takes six parameters, as they're called. It'll take an X1 and a Y1, and that is where this is going to go, uh, because we just want this to start exactly where our circle starts, right in the middle of our circle. And this is going to be the inner part of your gradient. Your, your first color, it's going to have a radius, an X, a Y, and a radius. That's going to be the first color. And then the second color is going to have or where, where you want it to stop is going to have a bigger radius. To better explain, I wrote it out here. We take an X1, a Y1, and then a radius 1. And that's going to be a small inner circle that will be a completely different color than the larger outer circle, and they will blend together. The larger outer circle also needs an X coordinate and a Y coordinate, so that's an X2 and a Y2, and it also needs a radius that is spelled correctly a radius to, then that's going to be, most of the time, the radius of your circle. For, for now, I'm going to keep it simple, and I'm going to keep the x1 and y1 and the x2 and the y2 the center of the circle, which is here. This is the x and the y coordinate of the circle that makes it the center of the circle. So I'm going to replace x1, y1 with that, and I'm going to replace x2, y2 with that. Now it ha they both have the same x and y coordinate. I'm going to change the radius, however. The smaller inner circle, I'm going to make it half of the radius, which is 100, so half of that is 50. Radius 2 is going to be the outer, bigger outer circle, so it just is the radius of the circle. So now I have a radial gradient that starts halfway, be, uh, halfway outside the center of my circle and goes all the way out to the center. And to make things easy and quick, I've just copy-pasted the add the color stops so that it just puts the rainbow right back in there. And don't forget, you have to change the context.fill style to the gradient that you just created. Now, when I save and cop and then go and refresh, save this and then refresh, it should There you go. Draw it draws a circle with the gradient from the center out starting at halfway from the center. You'll notice that red part was was about half of my circle. If you want it to be just from the center to another color, there, that's just two colors, from red to pink. What I'm going to do now <clears throat> is I'm going to attempt to show you what matters about the inner circle's x coordinate and y coordinate because as you see here they're both they both just have the center they both start at the center this inner circle starts at the center and then your outer dark black circle starts at the center but if you take the x coordinate the y coordinate of the smaller inner circle and you move it slightly off to the left which means you have to subtract from the x coordinate and if you move it slightly up which means you have to subtract from the y coordinate and I'm also going to change it to a gray so that it looks more like a, a, a shadow or a light. Now, I've actually messed up. I got my radiuses too big. I, th I thought there was something wrong with my code, which is why you see me inspecting. I'm looking for an error in my code. And since there is none, I realize what my mistake is. And I'm like, oh, I have moved it too far to the left and too far up. And it's moved it completely off of my circle. So you bring that in a little bit. And then, there you go. Now the inner part of my circle has an X and Y coordinate that is offset of the center by 20. 20 inside and 20 up. Um, I'm going to add a third color so that it goes from white to gray to black. 
a little bit more of a transition and then I really for a minute here I'm just gonna mess with it and I'm gonna get I bring the diameter the inside radius down way down so that it goes from 50 to 5 and instead of being a big white circle inside, now it's going to be a small white circle inside. But that brings it too far in. So then I adjust the X coordinate and I bring it further in by subtracting more from it. Really, I just take it back to the 50 I did earlier. And then there you go. Now you have a nice little highlight on your circle. So congratulations on completing part three of this series. Please take some time to explore the code we've just written and make it your own. In the next video, we will learn to animate our pictures and begin working with objects. See you there.